Hello everyone, um, today I want to get on with sewing my Zabrun shallots. Uh, these are some of last year's harvest, I mean, these are absolute beasts. And very fortunate last year that they grew so well. And the other fortunate thing was that once these were planted and watered in, I didn't need to water them at all, all the way through, because growing on no dig beds, so they stay moist underneath with the mulch of the no dig bed, which is your compost. So they were really good. Uh, they were planted out, I think, in around about April, and they just grew on. I just kept them weed free, and that's pretty much all I needed to do. Now, I've had some contact this year from a couple of people who have been struggling with the sowing of uh, some of the shallots of run. Uh, there's one guy in particular who had two different packets, and I've got four here, um, with different pack dates on, and one particular pack date didn't work particularly well for him. He didn't get any germinate, whereas another pack, which was older, did germinate. So I'm going to sow all the four different pack dates that I've got here, and I've got two old, so one is January 22, and one is December 22, so both were out of date last year. And I'm just sowing them on the surface of some sieved compost. And it's sieved because when I come to pull the seedlings out later, the roots haven't grabbed hold of any of the lumps in there. And then when you pull them out with the aid of a dibber, you're not breaking roots. So that's the idea with that. And that's why I always sieve my compost. So, so I've got these two, and then I've got two more pack dates. One of them is, well, both of them are in date. One is January next year, and the other one, I think, is July next year. Uh, so I've marked on the labels which is which, and we'll see what's what. Do let me know in the comments if you've struggled with them, um, and if you've still got the packet, note down the dates and we can pass that information back to the suppliers i'm using premier seeds here as was the one of the guys that's contacted me about them and i've asked him kindly if he would just feed back that information to premier seeds they can look at their stock where they got it from they can do germination tests if necessary and that helps the seed suppliers help the people who buy them which is me and you so the more information that they've got, the better it is. Don't just put it down to a bad packet of seeds, throw them away and not say anything. Feed back to the people. Um, and I'm sure they'll be grateful for that. So with them sown, just a bit of compost on top. Uh, I'll put them on my propagator here for a few days just to get them going. And we should see signs of life in these fairly quickly. Now I don't grow that many onions anymore i like a mix i like um i prefer the shallots because i mean look if you're getting something that size out that's as big as an onion anyway these are sweeter they're milder they're not as harsh as a white onion can be and i prefer that um i do grow a few onions for some dishes like uh an onion soup or something where you need to have that bitterness within them um but I like a mix, everything from sort of spring onions upwards, really. So they are my shallots. Now I've already sown some leeks in the polytunnel uh, down, down at the plot and I've done in a, like a little nursery bed. I'm hoping they will come up inside the polytunnel and I can move them on from there. But I'm also gonna sow some in a tray and these are mussel bread. Uh, I don't use many varieties of leeks, never really tried that many. Mussel will work well for me. Um, Blue de Soleil is another one. Prize Taker was another one I've tried. But apart from that, I haven't really tried a great deal of leeks. So if you've got a really good leek you want to recommend to me, then again, please pop it in the comments. I'll be interested to hear what you've got to say about them. And I'm particularly looking for ones, I mean, I know Musselboro stands well through the winter. So again, that's really what I'm looking for. 
I know there's a, there's a few varieties that you can sow now for onion, you know, for um, autumn. But I'm particularly interested in the ones that I can pull up fresh from the ground late season. And I'm shooting a dice again here with this one. This is another onion, although I sowed my onions on Boxing Day. This is another red onion I found in my seed box, red amposta. Never tried this one before. And I'm gonna see how I get on with them, sowing them this late in the year. I really like the red onions and the germination and of the ones I sowed on Boxing Day wasn't great. It was probably, I probably got half a dozen of that. And I really like red onions, so I've got to have them. So we'll try this one. We'll add to it. As I say, there's, uh, you, if you're growing in no-dig soil, you really shouldn't need to water them, which, you know, is a time saver later on. Just space them, space them wide enough when you plant them out so that you can get a hoe up and down the rows and take care of the weeds nice and quickly and that that's all you really should need to do so once these seedlings come through and they're big enough i'll just pot them on into module trays and then i'll take them down to the tunnel put them somewhere safe down there to let them grow on and they'll be going into a, a smallish tray let's see if i've got one well one this sort of size that's a 40 cell uh, tray, they're bed implants those. Uh, they'll be going into tray similar to that so that the roots can fill it so hopefully sort of probably around late April maybe even into May they can go in the ground um, but the roots on those plants will have filled those modules. That's a, that is my signal to plant them out whether that's the first week in April which it won't be or well, the last week in April but as soon as the roots are filled there and wanting to get out, then I know they're growing well and they'll go in the ground. Um, as for feed, nothing much really. It's just simply um, no deep ground for me. Uh, you can add some um, calcified seaweed. Onions and shallots do tend to like that if you've got some of that. We used to call it marl. So you can use that if you want to, if you can get hold of it. Difficult to get hold of now, but if you can get hold of it, they will appreciate a bit of it. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed that. Short and sweet, this one. But it's another couple of seeds sown. And then I can keep this process going, keep moving the plants on down to the polytunnel and eventually into the ground and into our stomachs eventually. <laughs> Look after yourselves, everyone. Take care. See you soon. Tirana.